to the beginning of the service, you will be invited to come forward to receive the imposition of ashes. I know it's not Ash Wednesday, it's Ash Sunday instead, but the invitation to remembering our mortality and to remembering God's promises to us that death is not the end are God's eternal promise. And I think that there is a beauty in being able to do that on the first Sunday in Lent, even if it's a little bit later than we would normally do it. So I hope that you will be you will be brave with me and you will get yourself marked with that ashy cross. If you are super, 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 super uncomfortable with it on your forehead, I invite you to stick out your hand instead. Um, but I hope that you will embrace embrace this with me as well. With that, dear friends, we turn our hearts and minds to our whole family. Jesus fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tested in every way that we are tested, yet remained without sin. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is with us in our own temptations, tests, and trials. God is our strength every morning. And our salvation in times of distress. God is our hiding place in times of trouble. And surrounds us with grand cries of deliverance. Friends in Christ, uh, we're, just a pause before we get to our confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, <coughs> while today isn't Ash Wednesday, we are still invited to enter with the whole church, not just our church, but all of God's people, into the time of remembering Christ's Passover from death to life, and our life in Jesus is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with all creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. With that, then, we now confess our sin before God and one another. Remember the words of the psalmist to the people of God, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered by the grace of God. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. We'll take a moment of silence before we continue. Gracious God, in this unfinished life, we confess that our values do not always align with yours. We do not know how to value what you value. And amid the temptations, tests, and trials of our lives, we choose wrongly. Forgive us and lead us through the wilderness so that in this cross and spirit still, our lives will reflect you and your love for this world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. God, who is rich in mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, has come to us in Jesus, who by his holy cross has redeemed our world. Buried with Christ by baptism into death, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Cross-marked and spirit-sealed, you are raised to new life. Almighty God, strengthen you in faith to live each day renewed in God's call for your life. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. And at this time, you are invited to come forward for the imposition of ashes. And that's 
for everyone. I even marked <coughs> Ellie in the first service. So all are welcome to come up.
Spirit of God to value what you value and to live our lives reflecting those values. Shepherd our commitments that they may reflect your purposes in and through our lives. Show us when our values are misguided and move us to correct our ways. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I invite the children to come to the middle of the church for the children's message. Circle up. We are going to be front and center today. Since we have nobody in this back corner, I'm going to park myself right here. You guys feel like you're at the center of everything right now? Come on. Jesus did. 
So that is what we are going to try to do. And if you would like a remembrance drink, I will hand them out at the end of the day. And you can have a, a brother or a sister or an adult help you put on the drink that I have here. All right? How does that sound? All right. It is prayer time. Here we go. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. By trusting God. By trusting God. You resisted Satan in the wilderness. You resisted Satan in the wilderness. Help us to remember. Help us to remember. When we are tempted to do bad things. Or sorry. To remember you. Remember you. When we are tempted to do bad things. When we are tempted to do bad things. Give us what we need. Give us what we need. To turn from sin. To turn from sin. We all say. Amen. All right. Who wants a string before we go down to Sunday school? Not me. Not me. Once you've got your string, you can go down. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loin cloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able. to be 
become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, so that they will, and they will bear you up on their hands, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to Jesus, all these I give to you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of the Holy One. Amen. For just for a moment with me, imagine, like, think about how it is we usually see Jesus. Right? Like how, like, when we see him in like pictures or you know, sensationalized movies. What does he look like? He's often shown, I don't know, maybe this is just me, what I've seen, he's often shown in a way that kind of shows him off, right? Like, he's tan, he's smiling, he's got this gentle expression on his face, and he's clean, <laughs> right? No dirt, no nothing on his, his clothes, his hair is brushed nicely. He looks acceptable, like any young man you'd be happy to welcome into your home, right? Most of these images of Jesus kind of gloss right over, you know, the fact that he was indeed truly human. Now, during Advent and Christmas, we boldly proclaim the incarnation of God made flesh. I actually think that a lot of us believe that proclamation. But when it comes time to linger on that 100% human part of Jesus Christ, well, we have to look too closely at what it means for the Son of God to have been flesh and blood, just Mommy, like you are right in this Dad, moment. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think some of us get a little squirmy. Like, we don't, like, we like that Jesus is human, but we don't like the human part of that humanness, right? Because humanity is pretty messy looking at the world around. It's kind of gross kind of dirty, maybe a little dusty. And with all of these things combined and more, it's a lot to imagine that the Son of God was truly, really human. As my favorite, Debbie Thomas, argues, this is what we engage with during Lent. It's why we still included part of the Ash Wednesday service at the start of our worship today. Ash Wednesday gathers us in, gathers us up to remind us of God gathering together the dust of the earth and breathing life into humanity. Gathers us up to remind us of our mortality. We cannot escape death. Regardless of our attempts to use medicine, exercise, supplements, cosmetics, or mindfulness to stave it off. Not that any of those things are bad things, but it's this timeless human struggle of identity and mortality, and that is exactly where we find Jesus. He has just spent 40 days without food and probably very little water. He is without family or friends. I mean, he's weak with hunger. I can't imagine him being like all that glowing, but rather that he's gaunt, strained, dirty, tired. 
cannot tower over the tempter who has come to seduce him away from God's claim and prove himself as the son of God. I mean, at the Jordan River, God claimed him as the son, the beloved, and whom God is well pleased. But the fog of hunger and isolation would make that hard to remember, and the tempter is cunning. He has arrived when Jesus is at his weakest, and he means to use it to his full advantage. When the serpent tempted Adam and Eve, he invited them to imagine being like God, to leave aside their humanness and to embrace the divine, as though they could actually accomplish that shift from their full, only completely human humanity. And so when the devil sought out Jesus, though, he doesn't tempt him with the divine. Jesus is divine. He, God has claimed Jesus as God's own. But can Jesus really be human, too? Can he set aside his rightful power to experience the fullness of human hunger, pain, and longing? Would Jesus actually willingly accept the limitations of mortality, knowing that he was fully divine? The tester tests Jesus over his own identity. What can be more human than that? Jesus' time in the desert begin, happens at the beginning of his ministry, of his journey to the cross. I had a lot of time in those 40 days to think, to pray, to wonder. I bet he maybe even raged, lamented. And called God to task for what was being asked of him. But what is important to remember in all of this is that at the center of our human experience is the deeply held belief that we have full free will. That no one, not even God, makes us do anything like a marionette player pulling our strings. We know how the world works, and that it is manipulative and demanding, and that we often don't feel like we have a choice. But with God, we always, always have a choice. And Jesus, he had a choice. He had a choice whether to follow the path that would lead to the cross or to say to heck with it and eat the stones turned to bread. He chooses the path. He chooses to embrace his identity as the son of God, as a part of God's very own self. He chooses self-denial. He chooses to set aside his rightful power and instead uses his God-given authority to tell the devil to go to hell, quite literally. We enter into our season of Lent with this text for a very good reason, because God gives us a choice too. A choice to whether we will follow Jesus and his way, his way of peacemaking, of forgiveness, grace, love, or whether we choose our own self-interests, holding grudges, blaming others for our problems, and putting resentment before all else. The season of Lent begins with the reminder that we all will end our lives in death, but that the ashes of that death are a precursor to the resurrection and life everlasting that Jesus has made available to all of God's beloveds. That path of self-denial is a hard one, and I'm going to be honest, I am not very good at it. And yet, it is God's grace upon grace upon grace that fills us up, holds us up, and calls us God's own good creation. God's own very good creation. Systematic theologian Paul Tillich writes that 
those who dream of a better life and try to avoid the cross as a way, and those who hope for a Christ and attempt to exclude the crucified have no knowledge of the mystery of God and humanity. St. Paul writes in Romans that Jesus' death overturned the, condem the condemnation of death that Adam's fall created for humans. That the failure of the first ones, the first humans, led to death for all. But that the life and gift of pure grace from one man who was fully human just as he was fully divine could heal that ancient wound. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. Jesus chose the path to the cross so that all of humanity could be restored to life to overturn the condemnation and brokenness that the first humans created and to turn the ashes of our death into new life, into new ashes gathered up and breathed into. Jesus knew who he was, who he is, and who he will always be. God's own beloved son, God made flesh, fully human, fully divine. The salvation and redemption of all our brokenness. The defeater of the tempter. The defeater of death. Thanks be to God. We live in a world where we're so focused on only the positive and not talk about the negative. Not talk about our sin, our failures, our regrets. But it's God that tells us to embrace our identity, our identity as children of God. Please join us as you are able. Thank you.
so. <laughs> With the assurance that God will hear us as we begin our Lenten journey, let us pray. We lift up prayers for the world, for all countries that continue to be torn apart by conflict, hunger, and natural disasters. We particularly pray for the people who have lost loved ones or have been forced to leave their homes due to the earthquakes in southern Turkey and northern Syria. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift up prayers for our nation, that our leaders would be transparent in their decisions and be just in the laws that they make. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift up prayers for those who are sick or in good healing. We especially think of Kay, Lori, Jeff, all of our families and friends, Anne, the Nelson family following Lisa's death, Polly as she was treated for cancer, Sharon, Laura, Walt. Bring them physical, emotional, and spiritual restoration. Guide doctors, nurses, and medical assistants that they may be compassionate and caring. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift up prayers for those who live in poverty, those forgotten or overlooked. Help us to hear their cries and act in your love to serve them with joy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you for the gift of this Lenten season. Thank you for knowing our hearts and our need for rhythm in our lives and for drawing us into a deeper communion with you throughout the coming 40 days. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift up prayers for the Church of Jesus Christ and all lands. We pray for your blessing on our congregation and for your presence to be seen clearly in what we do and say each day. We pray that your joy and love will flow freely in and through us as a congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Assure us as we go forth into the world that you have heard and will answer us in your time. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with each other.
Precious God, we give you thanks that through Christ you have taught us to give without thought of reward, to be sincere in fasting and prayer, and to store up treasures in heaven. Receive the offerings of our lives and use these gifts we bring to help those who are in need, to do good and relieve suffering, and to welcome your new creation. In Jesus' name we pray. I invite you to please rise as you are able as we continue with our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the beginning, you spoke the word that gave life to all the world. You created us in your image and called us to be your people. Even when we deny your word and betray the promise of our faith, you remain faithful in your love. Remember, in the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. You love the world so much you sent your only son to save us. Jesus gives living water to those who are thirsty. He offers healing and grace to those who are suffering in sin. And to those in the dust of death, he is the resurrection and the life. Pour out your Holy Spirit among us. Transform this simple meal into the heavenly banquet of grace. Transform this human gathering into the living body of Christ. Teach us to love one another just as Jesus has loved us, so all the world will know that we are Christ's disciples. Keep us faithful in your service until with all the saints we cry, it is finished. God has done it. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
much for not singing. Sorry about that. And on the God, God's grace rejoices. It's all good. To those who are worshiping with us from home, this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Dear ones, now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise at this covenant meal you have nourished us with your own body and blood. Sustain us with your spirit and send us forth singing praise until we meet with you again in the glory of your holy crown. Amen. As we go now from this time of worship, God goes with us and before us. God grounds us in our identity as children of God and strengthens us for every test and temptation that comes our way. And even when we fail, God still says, I love you. And he sends us now with this blessing. May the Lord of heaven and earth be your helper as you go forth. May the Lord preserve your life and protect you from evil. May the Lord watch over your going out and your coming in, now and always. Amen. Well, we need forgiveness, that's for sure. And we need a focus in our lives, because we're so easily distracted or swayed. He is our rock. There is no other God like our God.
May we go forth in, to worship and serve the Lord our God, our only God. Uh, 20 months. 20 months. 